الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول الکریم و آل تیمین طاہرین المحسمین المسلمین تھینک یو ویری مچ فار انوائٹنگ می اوور فار دس سیشن آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو تھینک دی آرگنائزرس فار گیونگ می دی اپرچونیٹی ٹو کم اینڈ اسپیک ٹو یو اباؤٹ اے سبجیکٹ وچ از ویری کلوز ٹو مائی ہارٹ اینڈ آئی ایم ویری کمپیشنیٹ اباؤٹ اٹ آئی ہیو ڈن این ایم ایس سی ان ایلوجی اوور تھری اور فور ایئرس And uh, when I was asked to speak to you all about allergy, um, I think I was thinking about how would I um, summarize my knowledge of over five years into 15 and 20 minute session. Um, as the brother said, it's uh, such a common problem we are all facing as parents um, nowadays. Um, so I haven't prepared any slides, haven't put a lot of scientific um, knowledge into it. But the whole concept of this talk is just to um, have an informal discussion um, and to help people who have children or adults who are currently suffering from allergies, give them some hands-on tips and help them manage, or people who have children who don't have the diagnosis yet, just to give them some information as to what's the best way of getting the diagnosis and the specialist um, services we have available in NHS. Um, a lot of people ask me why did I choose um, feel of allergy um, and the very simple answer is that my own two children, um, I have two boys, mashallah, um, they both had allergies when um, they were children and alhamdulillah they've grown out of it. But I think as a mother and as a doctor it was a difficult journey um, having children who have got severe allergies um, and not only just the skin allergy but they have food allergy. Um, so yes, shopping used to take a lot of time, reading all the labors and everything. So I'm, I can give you not only my medical knowledge, but also my hands-on experience as a mother of managing two children who had multiple food allergies. Um, I graduated from a little bit about uh, my background, just to give you um, a bit of more information about myself, to be honest. Um, so I graduated in 2004 uh, from Army Medical College. Um, and came here, got married and came here and I did all my <coughs> training here. So my training was predominantly in acute medicine, um, did a bit of pediatric work and currently working in geriatrics. Um, so in 2007 when my oldest son was born, um, he started off with very severe eczema um, and ended up having an anaphylactic reaction to milk uh, when he was four months old. Um, and that was the time when actually I thought and asked myself a question of what allergy is actually. Because under graduate medical school I had very limited um, uh, knowledge, to be honest, um, of any allergy. Um, and in our um, country, um, back home, um, the incidence of allergies is still, was very low at the time. Um, and I'm sure it's on the rise, and I'll get back to that point when I come to the discussion about what allergy is and how it develops. So um, I did my MSc um, as a part-time over four years at Imperial College London, and prior to doing my allergy MSc, I did some courses um, just to get a bit more basic physiological, and to understand the more physiological processes which involve allergy. Um, and I did some clinic at Chelsea and Westminster in allergy. Um, And I'm very passionate about it, not only because my own children have allergies, but I've also seen um, in pediatric <coughs> population, um, not only children, but how the mother and parents are suffering because of their allergies. Um, so I'll just um, highlight the most important facts which probably are relevant to day-to-day -day life. Um, first of all, what is allergy? Um, the commonest type of allergies and the reason why we're seeing such a big rise in allergy and the research around it, which has been going on for years. Um, and then some management, very common um, and easy way of explaining how we commonly manage allergies. Um, and then I'm more than happy to take questions. Um, I'm not going to use any specific statistics, as I said, because I haven't prepared my um, uh, formal talk or lecture. Uh, but if somebody is interested and they want to find out any scientific basics or any statistic, then more than happy uh, to contact me directly. Um, allergy is a form of immune um, mechanism which 
your body. So every, all of our body has got an immune system which recognizes all the foreign particles. Um, allergy is uh, an immune-mediated reaction to harmless agents, which means that if you have an infection, a virus or a bacteria, uh, which comes and attacks our body, our immune system can recognize it and knows and fight against it. Um, unfortunately, that immune system gets dysregulated due to different reasons. Um, and the normal um, harmless agents like food um, and other uh, material which are around in our environment, um, our dysregulated immune system is unable to recognize them as harmless and thinks that this is something which is harmful to our body. And we developed um, an immune-mediated reaction which we call allergy. So this is the most simplest way of explaining it. Um, there are different type of uh, allergies, and the most common being food allergies, which are very common in pediatric population. Um, and most of the children who have pediatric allergies, they do grow out of them. There are certain um, allergies, which I'll come back to, which will persist in adult life, unfortunately. Uh, apart from food allergies, we have ectopic dermatitis, which is eczema, which we call dry skin. Um, this is again a type of allergy which is most prevalent along with the food allergy and um, is the most common encounter for the parents with the GPs and other specialties. Um, then we have allergic rhinitis and asthma which go in hand in hand. Um, allergic and rhinitis we understand as um, hay fever. Um, it's seasonal and different people develop different type of symptoms um, and then if the allergic rhinitis is not uh, treated um, and diagnosed promptly. Um, it can develop into long-term asthma, uh, which is another airway problem, um, which impacts um, on a person's life a lot. Um, and studies have shown that patients who suffer from allergy and asthma, their um, quality of life is worse than a patient who has got diabetes, which is very interesting, and I'll come back to it to explain the reasons why. Um, and then we have got, um, there are other diagnoses which come under the umbrella of allergy, but they are non-immune mediated and they present as if it's an allergy. But if we do the normal allergy testing, most of the tests will come back negative. Um, and they are normally discussed um, in allergy field, but they are actually um, non-immune. Um, and it's eosinophilic esophagitis and um, F-pies. Um, these are very uncommon um, conditions, but probably uh, when you ask the allergy specialist, they probably see it more often than the general population. Um, so these are the no, uh, most commonest um, allergy conditions which we as specialists come across. Um, the most important question and the most common question which most of um, my colleagues and relatives ask me, why we are seeing such a big rise in allergy. Um, there has been um, million of studies done so far. This um, allergy field has been expanding every day. And people have spent a lot of money um, trying to figure out the reasons why we are seeing such a huge increase um, um, in allergy, um, all sorts of allergy. We, when I use the term allergy, I will just put everything under the umbrella of allergy. If we discuss the specific topics, then we can um, explain a little bit more detail, asthma, eczema, and food allergy separately. But for time being, for the sake of this discussion, I'll just put allergy in one, uh, under one umbrella. So the studies uh, which have done, been done so far, um, the most commonest and the most well-known and validated um, pathogenesis, which has been um, agreed by most of the researchers, is we call hygiene hypothesis, uh, which probably we all have uh, observed that uh, the reason why we don't see a lot of allergy still in Africa and Southeast Asia or other third world country is um, simply because children in the young life have been exposed to a lot of germs um, early on in their life, um, which actually regulates their immune system, which means that every time you have an encounter with, uh, with an infection or a virus, your immune system is getting a constant um, feedback from the environment. Um, in, third, um, in, in the Western countries, over the years, with the, um, over the, years, the, research, you know, the, the use of antibiotic, the more hygiene conditions, people are getting less infections, um, the rise of infections going down has being parallel to the allergies going up. Um, and this has generated the hygiene hypothesis that people who are much more in a clear environment, their immune system goes dormant, which means that your immune system is not exposed to um, the organism which uh, would have been um, 
50, 60 years ago. And over the years, the more westernized lifestyle, um, the more less infections, the more um, use of antibiotics, and then the more rise of allergies. So essentially, if I summarize it, the more cleaner environment you are, the more likelihood is that you're going to get allergies. It's a very interesting phenomena. Um, and I think it took me a while to get my head around it, that how come you're clean and you're having less infection, but at the same time you're having more allergies. But that is um, the bottom line of all the allergy studies or research we have done so far. And on, uh, we're getting more new information about the allergic mechanisms. And I think over my career in the last 10 years, I have seen a lot of new um, guidelines coming into place where people were told, especially women when they were pregnant, not to eat peanuts during pregnancy. I remember it. I was told not to have a peanut during um, when I was pregnant. And now those guidelines have been taken back because we have seen such a huge rise in uh, peanut allergy. And there have been big studies going on which have actually seen that the more we are excluding these foods from our life, the more we are dysregulating our immune system, which means that every time we take a food away, um, we see a big rise in the allergy, purely because our immune system, which should be exposed to these allergens, is not being exposed. So there have been a lot of contradictory information from allergies, um, I'm afraid. Um, there was time when um, we were saying that we should exclude all the food from children and introduce them when they're six months old or one year old. Um, but now the consensus is, um, that even if you have a child who's got allergy, the sibling should be exposed to a balanced diet as early as possible. Um, so I think it, it, um, it, it opened up a whole Pandora box of a discussion among the allergists, and people were having a discussion whether we're giving a lot of contradictory information, are we going to put people more on risk of anaphylaxis? But I think overall everybody has agreed that even if um, your older sibling or older child is allergic, the chances of having a subsequent child with allergy is high. But we should not recommend that everyone should exclude all the food from the child and just introduce. It's a good idea to introduce one food at a time, but I think I, my limited knowledge still says, but I think it's a good idea that unless and until you have allergic reaction which is proved, um, by the skin prick testing and other um, testing, I think we should expose our children to all sorts of food um, sensibly, um, but make sure that they are not excluded from their diet. So that's one um, practical um, thing which I have learned during my um, allergy um, MSc. Um, the other is, there are um, a lot of other factors which have been um, picked up during um, uh, different research studies. Um, children who are born on the farm have, are less allergic um, um, because they're exposed to um, the more um, friendly bacteria during their early life. Children who are breastfed are less likely to have allergies. Um, children um, who have got more vitamin D in their body are less likely to have allergy. Um, so there's a whole, you know, there are, it's, it's a jigsaw puzzle, I would say, that putting, asking someone why somebody develops allergy um, is not one reason. The, um, the hereditary is, is the biggest reason. If you have a family history of allergy, you are more likely, you are more predisposed to have uh, um, allergies in future. But if you have a predisposition and you are in an environment which is, which is going to uh, make you more allergic, you are definitely going to develop allergy. So having said that, uh, uh, that there are um, predispositions, you still can do things um, uh, which hopefully will prevent um, the uprise of the, um, such a massive in, um, epidemic of allergy. Um, skin allergy being the most commonest, eczema, um, it starts with the dryness of skin, um, and if it's not treated, um, it gets worse and worse. Um, and actually, the new theory says that it's not the food allergy which causes eczema, it's the other way around. If you have a child who's got dry skin um, and he's got eczema, um, because of his break in the skin, he becomes more sensitized to the food he's not even been exposed to. So I'll give you an example. If you have a child who's born who's got severe eczema, and if that severe eczema is not treated, he will develop food allergies purely because the break in the skin, he's got food in, um, in his environment all the time. So if you have, you have a child who's got skin, severe skin um, allergy and eczema, he, before he gets introduced to the food through his mouth, he will, his body will be 
um, or his immune system will be exposed to the food allergens through his skin, and he will get eventually sensitized and develop food allergies. So I think um, practically, um, I would uh, definitely ask the mums to please, please, please pay a lot of attention to um, skin. If you have a child with eczema, um, forget about the food allergies. I think the most important thing is that you need to make sure that you put lots of moisturizer, keep their skin under control, um, and don't be scared of using steroids. Um, there are a lot of um, parents who have got a lot of anxiety about ste uh, using steroids. Steroids are good medications, um, and the side effect develops if you use it for over years and use it um, against the medical advice, which means that um, the way doctors and pharmacists uh, um, advise you how much quantity are you going to use, how do you thinly spare, um, spread it on the skin, um, and how many times you can use, they are quite safe, and they can prevent your child from having sleepless nights, which will impact on their long-term behavior, which will impact on their educations, um, on their concentration. So all those sorts of things. If you have a child with eczema, please, please do make sure that you follow the instruction exactly the same way. If you have to put the moisturizer three or four times a day, please make an effort. The more the skin is under control, the more you are going to prevent yourself from having more problems in the future, which means not only the food allergies, but they will get sensitized to house dust mites through carpets, they will develop allergic rhinitis, and they will eventually, this, this is a whole allergic march we call. So it's, allergic march starts with having a skin, dry skin, and if it, doesn't, if it doesn't get treated on time and properly, you can have a child which will have a proper allergic mind. And in my career, I have seen children having, simply having eczema, developing the proper food allergies, developing having allergic rhinitis, and then going on to have long-term inhalers for the rest of their life for asthma. So I have been always very passionate. And ever, whenever I see a child with eczema, I think, the first advice I give to the parents is please, please make sure that you pay a lot of attention to their skin and do exactly what the GPs and your specialists are telling you. Making sure you exclude all the perfumed uh, products for wash out of their system. Um, simple water is fine. Putting a lot of moisturizer as a soap doesn't make any sense because we're used to having a shower with the soap and shampoo. But I think these children want, want, the skin of these children is so delicate that you have to keep it under control. So lots of moisturizers. For flares, you need to give them steroids, tapering dose. Um, don't introduce steroids suddenly and take them away suddenly because you're literally giving the skin, you're not even giving the skin time to heal. Five days of steroids and then completely taking them away and thinking the skin will magically improve, it will not. It takes weeks and weeks to cut on top of eczema. And it's just not childhood. If it's not treated, it can c continue to have impact as an adult. And it's quite a severe condition. It's just not simple skin. Um, food allergies, um, practically, I think the most important thing is getting them diagnosed on time and getting them di diagnosed correctly. Um, most of the people who have children with um, food allergies will know that whenever you go to a GP or a specialist, um, you're sent to do some skin prick testing. And um, the thing which most of the time I see parents struggle to understand is that the skin prick test has come back positive to um, three millimeter to egg. The child has never been exposed to egg and people just get worried, oh my God, his uh, skin reaction is three millimeter, he's severely allergic to egg. Um, if your specialist is saying that his skin is sensitized, but he does not have an allergy, please trust them. Having a sensitization on a skin prick test is very different to having an allergy. Skin prick test only gives you an idea of whether your immune system is re responding to an allergen or not. It doesn't give you any um, mo more information. So you have to interpret a test in the context of um, history. If you have a test and your son had a um, egg and he did respond in, a, in an allergic way, then yes, it is a confirmed allergy. But if he's not been exposed to egg or he's been having egg regularly, please do not exclude it. This is skin prick testing and allergy as a phenomena are two different things. Skin prick testing only gives you an immune reaction to, um, to, the, to the allergen. It does not necessarily mean that your son has an allergy. So this is something which I have seen in clinics and over the years when, we, when mothers are so scared um, that they actually ex completely exclude those food. Um, so this, this I would recommend that definitely having a discussion, making sure that you understand the rationale of the test and how to interpret it. Just having a skin reaction does not mean that your son has or your child has, a, has an allergy. 
Um, the most um, other common scenario which I come across is that uh, the older son, um, a child has um, a food allergy and the little one is born, nobody has introduced any food um, and the mums want to get skin prick test. We do not recommend skin prick testing on a child who's not even been exposed to any food. Even if your older child has multiple food allergies, the chances of your second child having food allergies are still 50%. So looking at the glass full or half, you can say that maybe there's a 50% chance my second child will have an allergy, but equally there's a 50% chance he will not. So in that case, um, we do not recommend any skin prick testing. We just recommend being sensible, introducing one food at a time, but giving them every opportunity to enjoy every food. So if your older child has food allergy to milk, wheat, egg, or soy, or sesame, or, or nuts, um, when you start weaning them at the age of four or six, it's another discussion, um, you introduce one non-allergic food um, at a time. So most of the fruits are non-allergic and the incidence of still food allergies in, uh, with the fruits is quite low. So you can introduce one food at a time, which means you can introduce, rather than giving wheat, milk and banana at the same time, the recommendation is give them one food at a time and see how they react. If they are um, having no reaction, then the food is quite safe. Um, if they do have a reaction, then you, you have to stop the food, you have to consult your GP and ask their advice and get the skin prick testing. And then if the skin prick tests come back negative and the child is still having uh, the allergic reaction, then you definitely need to see an allergist to go through the whole profile of exactly what's going on. Um, Anaphylaxis um, is a life-threatening condition. Um, it's a severe allergic reaction. Um, it's just not um, a skin reaction. So if you have a severe, um, if you had an allergic food and you have a severe um, rash um, with some a cardiorespiratory compromise, that is anaphylaxis. So just having a bit of tingling or just having a bit of rash is not anaphylaxis. Um, the treatment is um, antihistamines and EpiPen. So if somebody has a severe allergic reaction and they collapse or they have a respiratory compromise, which means that they get swelling of their um, lips or mouth or they're finding difficult to breathe, then you need to give them EpiPen. Um, it's quite safe, it prevents, it saves life. So some people have a lot of anxiety about using EpiPen. It's a life-saving medication and you have to use it according to your GP and specialist advice. Um, if by mistake, if you're not sure and your child is having a reaction which doesn't turn out to be um, an anaphylaxis and you have given an EpiPen, it's still safe. So please, it's a life-saving um, treatment and if somebody is having a severe allergic reaction and you're not sure, it's best to give them EpiPen rather than not giving them EpiPen. Having a full plan of your um, child's allergy is always um, recommended. Having the written information um, is, is the gold standard. So if you're traveling um, or you're going to a country where English is not spoken, make sure you've got cards which are translated into um, the language where you're going, if you're going to Germany. Make an effort, make sure that all the allergic advice you have, your own medical card in English should be translated, or you can um, translate it and just photo keep, keep a photocopy. Um, so if your child is um, a teenager, is going out, and you're not around with him, um, and if he does have an allergic reaction, that at least there is some um, information as to exactly what people need to do. Um, teenagers, um, difficult age to manage allergies. They're much becoming much more independent. They are not adult, they're not children. Um, a lot of hormonal changes. And I think as an allergist, um, we struggle to um, get on top of their allergies purely because they have a risk-taking behavior and they feel that they don't need the EpiPens, which mom used to send them everywhere. Um, it's just the education and just going through things with them slowly and making them aware that um, risk-taking behavior will put and put them on uh, a lot of um, risk, more risk. Um, the highest um, incidence of anaphylaxis is uh, unfortunately still in teenagers. They are, go out with their friends um, and try foods they haven't tried for years and they say, well, we haven't tried, let's see what happens. And they end up having severe um, anaphylaxis reaction. And we have seen, all of you must have read in the news, um, teenagers dying because of the peanut allergy. So I think going through things with them, um, making them aware of their condition, making sure that they understand the, why they need to use the EpiPen, even if they're not used EpiPen for, for their life, they still need to carry it around in case if something happens. <clears throat> um, the other most important topic is allergic um, rhinitis and asthma. 
Um, if you have a child who is developing symptoms of hay fever, which means sneezing, um, itchy nose, um, runny, watering, washing of the eyes, or blocked nose, mostly in the mornings um, during different seasons, um, this is again um, is the allergic reaction to the, your upper respiratory system. Um, and if you don't use the allergic rhinitis, you are, the research have shown that um, um, the changes not only stay to the upper respiratory, it did to go down and involve your uh, low respiratory system and people develop asthma. So if you have a child who's just got hay fever, take it seriously, make sure they get their medications. If there are antihistamines for runny nose, um, they need to take it regularly, regardless if the hay season is there or not. Um, if they are on fluticasone a nasal spray, which is a steroid a nasal spray, um, they need to take it regularly, regardless the season is there or not. Um, some people find it difficult um, to use their inhalers just because they think that they're useless and they don't um, really you know, improve anything. I think there are two types of inhalers. One is the solbutamol, which is your reliever, and there's one which will prevent you from having um, asthma. So you need to take both of them. The reliever is when you need it, you can take it, but the other one, you definitely need to take it regularly, whether your asthma is controlled or not, because that is the medication which is keeping it under control. Um, there are other allergic reactions which are non-immune mediated, um, and people develop something called urticaria, which is not an allergy, which is just an idiopathic reaction, which is non-immune mediated, and you get exactly the same symptoms of um, rash and itching. And when people do, and when the doctors do the skin prick testing, the allergy um, tests are negative. So those are different from allergies. So those are simple urticaria, which means that you are just intolerant to a food, like lactose intolerant or wheat intolerance. So intolerance is different from allergy. Um, so I hope I've given you um, some practical <coughs> knowledge uh, about allergy. It took me five years, so it was difficult to uh, summarize all my five-year knowledge into 20 minutes, but I hope I'm um, able to discuss most of the things which are relevant and which are practical, and I'm more than happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you.